Welcome to the Boat Buyer Secret Weapon Series. I'm your host, Captain Matt, and today we're talking about boats not to buy, and this is part two. We did this video a couple months ago and got a lot of great input from our subscribers and our viewers, and I wanted to do a second part because there were some that just had to be added that I missed on the first one. And I also wanted to revisit a couple where I had some good input from, from everybody out there. So keep the comments coming, and I'm always looking to, to increase the value that these boats delivered. So um, this one is the 600 Mercury uh, V12s that just came out, and this was a comment by Ranger Truth, uh, one to add, don't buy the first year of a new production model. I, I think this is a, a really good one in the boating world. I had the opportunity to inspect the very first uh, Bennington Tritune, their bow rider um, that, uh, that they released, and I looked at it, and it was it was just not up to the quality that you would expect Bennington to to have. They just they the first time they make a boat, they don't know exactly how it's going to work together. Uh, they they do the best they can, but they're always going to be things that don't work out exactly right. They just can't test every environment. Uh, you know, with these six hundreds, they may make a thousand of these engines in the first year. It's just not enough to find all of the little things that are going to come up and, and that need to be need to be taken care of. I, I sold Sea Ray for a number of years, um, which is a Brunswick company, and Harris Pontoons. Uh, they had a, a Mercury, the 150. We had some issues with the very first generation. Now, it doesn't always happen. Uh, sometimes the first generation will come out just fine, but oftentimes there will be uh, catastrophic issues are just little stupid things. Uh, on on Sea Ray, they released a, a 210 SLX model uh, one year, and there was just some designs that just didn't make sense in the real boating world. That you know they fixed. They fixed halfway through the production year, but there were little things that oh, we didn't quite catch that in time. It's not until more eyes start getting on these boats until they're in use that those issues show themselves and then they can fix it in the second and third model year. Uh, so that's my my opinion is stay away from that new production. Uh, the first year that's something out, hey, let somebody else go through those those learning curves and the headaches and uh, you take the model the, the second or third year in. Next is a boat that hold, has an old registration sticker. This is an incredibly valuable one. I've seen it happen many times in some states. Whoever currently owns the boat, to get their registration sticker, that there may be back registration fees or back taxes in some cases, and it's the new owner that's responsible. And you can't get, in the state of South Carolina, I know this is true, you can't get your numbers and your updated registration card for that boat until those back taxes are paid. Now, you may say, well, that's the seller's responsibility. The state's position is, we don't care whose responsibility it is, you're not getting your registration on that boat because that boat has back taxes on it. Um, and so if you do ha come across a situation where you find a boat with the out-of-date registration, I encourage you to call the state, the the DNR, Department of Natural Resources, the Wildlife Foundation, uh, wherever they register boats in your state, and just check the hall ID number and the registration numbers and find out, hey, when was this boat last registered? Are there any outstanding um, fees, taxes, registration fees, penalties, anything like that that may come up so that you don't get yourself in a situation where you owe two or three years of back taxes or back registration fees that you weren't aware of. And, and I promise you, you won't be excited about paying them, but neither will the seller. The seller's not going to say, oh yeah, let me, let me cut a check for that. They're going to wash their hands of it and say, not my boat, not my problem in most situations. So be very careful of that one and, and do your do your due diligence before you write your check and um, and commit to that boat. The next one is a boat without a title. 
Um, last quarter sent this one in, and, and it's I, I've talked about it before in some other videos, but if the boat doesn't have a title, then you need to, again, do some due diligence. It, it's not always a deal killer. There are, there are states where they didn't start titling boats until the last 15 years or so. So it's not unheard of for a boat not to have a title. But what I want you to avoid is getting in a situation where you can't get it registered. So if there's no title, you need to go to the state where you're going to register it. Again, Department of Natural Resources, uh, the Fish and Wildlife, where wherever they register them in your state, go to that department go actually into the building and talk to somebody face-to-face -face if you can and say, hey, Marge, I'm buying this boat. What do I need? Can you write it down for me and put your name on it? And then when you go to register your boat, go back to Marge and say, Marge, remember me? Um, I brought you a Twinkie and I wanted you to remember me. Here's my paperwork. Here's everything you told me to have. Now I want to register my boat. That's really the best way to go. It also will avoid a scam. Sometimes they don't have a title because it, it, they, it's not their boat. There's It's a stolen situation. Um, th there's something going on where uh, maybe both parties don't agree to sell it. But by by having that title and doing that double checking, you're going to ensure that you're in good shape and you should at least have a registration card or something. Uh, the other thing that you'll want to do is get a copy of the seller's license and match it to the certificate of title. Now, remember, there could be a title for the boat, for the outboard motor or motors and the trailer. So you could potentially have multiple titles and you want to make sure you have each of them for each individual unit uh, because outboards are, are registered separately. Um, stern drives and inboards, you're just going to have the boat title. They're usually listed on there, uh, but there's not a separate title because they're built into the boat because outboards can be easily removed. Uh, they have their own title and then the trailer has its own title as well. So check the boxes on all three of those before you write that check. Now, this is one that I should have added is if you're a freshwater boater, I'm going to encourage you to stay away from saltwater boats, especially if it's a stern drive, but even outboards and inboards, um, they just live a harder life. You can see the same component that came out of a salt boat and came out of a freshwater boat. The salt water is so corrosive uh, in such a harsher environment. Now, if you if you run in salt water, you know you just got to do a lot more maintenance, and it's much more difficult for you to kind of inspect a saltwater boat to know that they did maintenance because all of that damage is happening internally. Um, so, if you're a freshwater person that isn't highly keen on the saltwater environment, uh, you may miss some things that could be very damaging and could be a, a big issue. So my opinion is just stay away from them. Stick to freshwater boats. There's enough when you're buying a used boat. There's enough to inspect to not worry about things uh, that are added on because of the saltwater environment. Now, this is one that I got so much crap on. Uh, I said, don't buy a sunk boat. It was probably the most commented on piece that I did. And I made a comment where I said, you leave the plug in and the boat sinks. Let me explain what I was talking about. If you haven't watched the video, go check that one out. It's, it's boats not to buy. Uh, you can find that on the channel. But what I was talking about is a boat sinking on the trailer. Here's what can happen is you leave the boat on the trailer and you leave the plug in the drain, the drain plug and the rain comes in. Now, what happens when the rain comes in? Well, that bilge switch, the bilge pump float switch kicks on. If the batteries are on, uh, if it's direct wired, which it should be that bilge pump kicks on and it starts shooting water out until the battery dies. Once the battery dies, that bilge pump, because the water has nowhere to go, fills up in the engine compartment and potentially gets up high enough to start causing damage. It's called sinking on the trailer. I did an awful job of explaining it in that video, and the <laughs> YouTube world let me know that I was a dummy. But 
It can be a major issue, and the first thing to go is going to be the starter. It's usually at the lowest point on the boat on a stern drive, um, and it's going to need to be replaced. If it goes higher than that, well, there can be even more issues the higher it goes on the engine. So that, yes, I put sunk boat in there as kind of a, a little funny, don't buy a sunken boat, but you can tell by the water line, if a, if a, boat has this happen, whether it really sinks, partially submerged, it sinks on the trailer like I just described, what you'll find is a water line to tell you how high it went. Take a look at that water line and then take a look at what could have possibly been damaged. Were the batteries submerged? Was the starter submerged? Likely. Uh, was there anything, any other engine components submerged could it have potentially um, gotten into the internal workings of the engine? If so, that's, that's a major issue that you want to take care of. So that's sinking on a trailer. Now, it's not the total death, but you better know what you're looking for. Um, I just helped a friend buy a boat, and it sank on the trailer. The guy, the guy in this case, it was in the water, uh, and it rained. The bilge pump died, killed the batteries. Um, it raised up, it got to the starter, which th I had them replace. Um, but it was fortunate that based on where the water line was that you can see in the bilge compartment, it's just a, a discoloration, um, where the water line is. And then up above it, it's nice and clean. So you can easily see it. Uh, but it, it just be extra cautious if that's happened. And if it's been really sunken, really submerged, that water can get into the stringer system and start to cause rotten damage if it's been there for a long period of time. It can seep in, uh, even in encapsulated stringers, and, and can, can be a big problem down the line. So I wanted to clarify that one. Um, this next one is the rot of that stringer system. I'll talk about that. You can see the U.S. Boat Expo. If you're considering a boat in the next 12 to 24 months, go check out usboatexpo.com. We brought together a bunch of industry experts uh, to give you advice in their particular area of expertise. And I think that's very valuable for you to check out. But this one, um, rot in the, in the deck and the flooring um, or the stringer system and the structure of the boat uh, can be a, a big problem. Now, I was given on the transom, on the stringers, the internal structure, I was given the comment of, hey, you need to tell people how to check for this. So here's how you check for rot. Um, one is if it's on the exterior of the boat, you should tap it with the back of a screwdriver or lightly tap it with a hammer. And what you're looking for is kind of a, or listening for more than anything is does that hammer kind of bounce back? Uh, like you're hitting something nice and solid and it, like you're almost hitting an anvil and it just kind of bounces off it. Or does it, does it make a thud and it's a little bit dull on the bounce back? It almost sounds kind of a hollow sound. Now, you don't need to crack it real hard. Just gently tap it, and you want to tap around all through hauls, uh, through haul fittings, uh, all around the transom, all around the, the, um, uh, where the, the stern drive is going to come out, uh, anywhere where there's a bolt going through the gel coat into the fiberglass, in through the, in through the, the transom, and you want to tap all around there. Um, that's how you tell if it's solid or not. I need to do a video of this, which, which will be coming out, um, when I have a boat that I can tap. <laughs> if you're looking at the stringers, you want to take an awl or a, a, a small screwdriver and just kind of, kind of press around in the wood in the area, take the screwdriver and turn a screw, um, to see, is it digging in and getting tighter or is it just stripping out, which is an indication that there's probably some rot under there that it's getting into. Uh, and this for snow dog said, give a sniff in the bilge compartment, a sweet and pungent smell is, is kind of the, a telltale sign, not a guarantee, but that means red flag, slow it down and look for more. And then Carl Jensen says, Hey, if you start seeing rot, it's four times more than what you actually see. So if there's rot in one spot, don't assume that that's it. There's probably more that you can't find and you can't see because it's all going to be under the gel coat, under the fiber, under the fiberglass. Um, it's not going to be just readily apparent. So 
really slow down. If you see indications of that, uh, slow everything down and, and just start digging in a little bit further. Now, this is one, the the OMC Stringer Drive, and, and I've got about five engines to stay away from coming up. So um, th- I think these are, are really, really important, so stay tuned. Um, but the Stringer system, everybody agreed. Absolutely stay away from it. I had a guy that said, I watched your video two months too late, um, and, and I lost uh, five, six, seven grand, whatever it was. Um, but I also had people that said, Hey, I've got the OMC King Cobra drive, uh, which is, a, a it was the patent was bought by Volvo and there's still parts available is what they're saying. Now I've also had some people that said I had a Cobra drive and it was bad too, but I, I just wanted to share this because I, I didn't, I don't think it's fair to put them in the same category. I think the OMC, OMC stringer drive, stay away from it. 100%. The OMC King Cobra drive, know what you're getting into. Um, Check and make sure you have a place to get parts, that you have somebody to work on it if you're not going to do the work yourself, uh, and that that boat and that drive is in as good of shape as humanly possible. Um, I, I think it's, it's important to know the difference. If you hear OMC, find out Stringer Drive or the King Cobra Drive, and if so... Stringer, stay away. King Cobra, red flag, slow it down and check everything else out in more detail. The XDP drive, I I had a couple people say, hey, you're a little bit too dramatic, but the majority of comments around it were stay away, stay away, stay away. So um, on this one, I'm going to still stick with stay away from it. I I think the, the jury is is in on that and it's this is a a drive that can be problematic and you're certainly going to have problems reselling it uh it because the problem's only going to get worse and worse about parts and and having issues so uh pay attention to that one if if you find a a volvo xdp drive uh, do your research and don't just jump into it. I'm going to say stay away from that one too. Now, this is one that uh, D Hurt8955 said, hey, the Malibu boats with the MEFI uh, 3 ECM, that's a, a fuel injected uh, computer module, basically. It's a, the third generation. And there was a difficult time finding a replacement part. They, they tended to fail quite a bit. I, I was in some Malibu groups and doing some research on this one because I wasn't familiar with it. Uh, but there is a place, if you are stuck in that situation, if you have that, um, that uh, MEFI, the electronic fuel injection ECM, the third generation, the OBD Diagnostic Inc., uh, in Redondo Beach, California, uh, was a good place to to start looking. Now, this was from 2012. Um, these boats were in the in the 99, early 2000 era. I couldn't find a specific year time frame, but just find out if you're looking at a Malibu. Um, find out what the ECM is in that uh, in that engine if you can, and just again slow it down. It's a red flag. Slow it down, and and don't get stuck in a situation. Situation where they're saying, "Hey, a rebuilt one's eighteen hundred bucks," and that was pretty consistent in all the all the chat rooms that I found. <laughs> this one, the Evan Rude uh, Ficht F I C H T, um, is another one that I, I got several comments on. Um, Surprise, it's not on the list. Ninety eight to two thousand, the the first ones that came out again like my first one is that first generation there can be issues i love new technology the boating industry is is really focused on bringing new technology to the forefront the problem with new technology is hey it's really difficult to put a a prototype uh one or two units through the the rigorous testing to sit, hit every single environment. Uh, one of them that we're going to come up talks about running it in cold water is causing an issue uh, and, and, and to failure. So it, it's tough to put it through every single scenario that um, is going to be thrown at it and put the the length of testing to it of, you know, 
500,000 hours to know what's going to happen in different settings. So this is another one that, um, again, I wasn't aware of, but uh, after doing some research, it, it needs to be on the list. So be be cautious of this. Here's another one. Brian McNulty um, said, hey, this uh, Yamaha four-stroke around 2003 to 2006 um, ha- has had some major issues. Doing some research, I found another clash action lawsuit um, of, of a premature failure. Now, these failures tended to happen around 500 to 700 hours. So this one definitely needs to be on the list because they're going to be in that range on a used boat and you need to be aware of them. That, um, you know, there were, there were engine failures that were happening uh, because of corrosion that were happening in the exhaust passages so the 03 to 06 there are four stroke a six cylinder uh the 200 and 250s uh were the ones that from from my research were um were having issues so pay attention to that here's my here's my philosophy on used boats is you can always find another one. So if you find the perfect boat, it's got this engine on it. My question is, do you want to take the chance that yours is going to have issues uh, or that yours is going to be the one that doesn't have issues uh, versus just going to another boat and and finding one that's that's not problematic? So um, the next one, this is the Optimax, 95 to 03 Mercury Optimax. This is a two-stroke. They were... They were having failures, again, for different reasons, but uh, the power head was failing. And you can see another one, the Yamaha HDPI um, is, was listed in this one. But the Optimax in these years was having power head failures. They were, they were going to fishing tournaments, uh, and several of them would blow in, in a cold water environment was one of the things that caused them to, be, to have problems. So if you find a boat that's got one of these older Optimaxes on it, 95 to 03, hey, just slow it down. Find out how it was maintained, how it was run. Um, have they done any? Have they repaired the power head or replaced the power head? Um, and maybe there's another boat that makes more sense for you. Um, so just, again, be cautious on that. Those those Optimaxes, 95 to 03. And um, I, I don't know if there was a horsepower range. Um, I, I believe it was on some of the bigger horsepower from what I was finding, but I, but I saw a lot of articles, a lot of them were on bass boats and, um, you know, a lot of them have probably been repowered and and taken care of. So the next one is the SEI replacement stern drive for the Mercury alpha, um, drives. Now here's the deal. SEI is a aftermarket lower unit to replace a Mercruiser lower unit. In my experience, the it's just not as well built. The gears are smaller, not as sturdy, not as heavy duty. Um, you already know if they're replacing the lower unit on a particular boat, if it had to be replaced, somebody either didn't do the maintenance properly or or they they ran aground, uh, they hit an underwater obstruction, they hit a log or a stump or or something that caused them to have to replace it. So you know that somewhere along the boat's life, they had a major issue happen, whether it was lack of maintenance or improper usage. Second, you know that they took the cheap way to repair them because these are less expensive. The SEI drives are, are less expensive and you can go out and just search uh, a Mercruiser Alpha drive and the SEI drive comparable and, and you'll see that they're they're about a thousand bucks cheaper. So they, they took the cheaper way to replace it. Now, because they took the cheaper way to replace it, my, my um, kind of bias is, well, they probably cut cut corners on other uh, maintenance items they probably cut corners on other corners on other areas of of owning this boat um in addition to the drive being in in my opinion and and captain slew here's opinion um just just an inferior quality product so 
I'm going to say, if you see that on there, it raises a red flag because it's on there, but it also raises a red flag because of how that boat was probably handled and maintained before, because that drive had to be put on it, if that makes sense. So I would love to hear your comments, especially on the SEI drive. Leave your comments. If I miss something else that I need to do a part three, put that in here. Let me know. Uh, let me know if I got something off. If I if I misspoke, be always glad to update it. Put it in the comments or do a whole new video. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel. Um, attend the Boat Expo. Uh, it, it's recommended. It'll take you usboatexpo.com. will take you right to all the details. YouTube has recommended some uh, videos here for you. And make sure you hit that like button if you found this valuable. Hit that dislike button if you hated it, if you thought I was way off base. And leave a comment and let me know why I was off base. Thanks for watching. And remember, life truly is better on a boat.